Connor in my chair. Kids, dinosaurs. Hello, and welcome to the Sanders Review. Today, I wanted to jump back into the series that my first actual review video was about, and that is Terry Pratchett's Discworld series. I was sick a couple weeks ago. I was able to, while sick, get through several books. This video and the next one are all going to be about some books that I read. The book that I want to highlight today from Terry Pratchett is his first book in his Industrial Revolution arc, and that is called Moving Pictures. And just so you know, this will be a spoiler-free review. If you're not familiar with Terry Pratchett, he was a British absurdist humorist author who wrote a bunch of different books, but his most famous, he's written over 40 in his Discworld series about a Discworld that sits on the back of elephants on this giant space turtle flying through space. It's a whole thing. Watch my previous video if you want to find out more about the Discworld. But Moving Pictures is that first one that is a major movement forward in the technology and the understanding of this world. Moving Pictures was written about an era that really is synonymous with our silent film era. In fact, uh, you could almost say that this book was a critique of the film industry in general from the late 1800s to the present, at least to when the book was written, because there are elements of the book which you really see the mental and spiritual emotional toll that filmmaking had, especially in this magical setting. One quote from this book was, fool the eye, fool the brain. And I really feel like Kerry Pratchett embraced that as he explored his characters in this story. If you watched my first Discworld review video on The Color of Magic, you know that the first early books are a very, I believe, a great place to start, but they do have a more exploratory nature of the world of the Discworld. Moving Pictures is an example of a book that is self-contained, that you don't have to have a lot of backstory and background to be able to understand and enjoy. The majority of this book takes place in a growing community outside of Ankh-Mor Pork called Hollywood. Come on, how much more obvious can you be? And something that Terry Pratchett kind of highlights within this, whether it was overt, but I mean, nothing Terry Pratchett really put into these books, especially that was ridiculous, uh, didn't have a lot of thought put into it, is the fact that in this Hollywood, the growing film industry almost was treated as an act of worship in a way. And eh, Unseen University, which trains all of the magicians of the disc, or at least the region around Ankh Morpork, uh, is always critical of magic being used outside of their training, outside of their oversight. And these new films, they don't appear to be magic because they're coming from the alchemists and from alchemy and I mean, those guys can't, have been trying to turn lead into gold for you know millennia, so what do they know about magic? But what comes about during this story is, in a sense, movie magic, a literal alternative form that takes some unique shapes and has an underlying plot behind it and motivation behind it. Something that I love about this book is just how many movie references from the beginning of the silent film era up until... Uh, this book was written were referenced. In fact, if you want, uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, films you may recognize that are referenced within this relatively small book. And I'm sure that I missed some, so if you know of any more that I missed, I would love to hear about them in the comments. A couple things I really want to highlight from this book is just how a variety of characters and places were brought into it in really unique ways. Uh, Unseen University, there's some characters and some mishaps that uh, go on throughout the book um, that are highlighting the danger that is escalating through the activities at Hollywood. And that is really cool. And it culminates kind of in my mind in what I'll just call the Wizard Midnight Escapades. And as is common in every single Discworld book, the fabric of reality is at stake. That could unravel and destroy every living creature on the disc and maybe in the cosmos. And I've only read through about 12, 13 of the Discworld books. I have a lot more to go. But it seems like every single book has a reality-ending cataclysm approaching. 
Some of the entities that throughout the disc world are trying to impact reality and enter reality are from places like the dungeon dimension, um, from imagination itself being created. And this book does a good job of highlighting some of those creations, or at least the motivation behind some of those creations. And can I please mention poor, sweet, grumpy, mangy Gaspode, the talking dog. Um, I just wanted to wash him and cuddle him and take care of him. And that's all I can say at this point without spoilers. But I feel like you will enjoy this character and other uh, sentient beings, I shall say. This book does an amazing job of highlighting the early chaos that was the film industry as you had dozens of film companies popping up in New York and in Florida and in Colorado and California and Hawaii. And as they are trying to experience and make money off of this new silent film industry, leading into the talkies of the 20s, leading further into with color um, in the 30s and 40s. So it's really highlighting that element. And you follow a series of characters that, through the influence of movie magic, start to get sucked into this world um, in a very unique, interesting way that just has breadcrumbs scattered throughout the entire book for the reader to just enjoy. And one thing to remember in this book by the end is that elephants never forget. Remember that. Throughout this book, there are so many amazing elements that just drew me in and I was laughing out loud. I was reading ebook and so I'd be able to read little bits and pieces here and there. And it's absolutely amazing. The weakest part of the entire book, I would say, is the ending. It wraps up in a way that is not entirely satisfying, which maybe that was Terry Pratchett's intention, but the ending for me drops it from what would have been a 4.5 to a 4. Still a strong, amazing book that I would recommend anybody who's interested in humorous, absurdist writing to read, but it does drop it down a little bit for my taste. But it's one of the most enjoyable Discworld books that I have read, and I'm looking forward to doing the Industrial Revolution arc of Discworld. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every view. Please, if you haven't, like, comment, subscribe. I'm on the road to try to get to 50 subscribers. I'm not going after thousands and thousands of viewers and subscribers, but it is neat to know that I'm connecting with a few more people over time, and it makes the time that I put into these worthwhile, but I would still do it just because I love talking about books and uh, going about BookTube in this way. YouTube at the end here is going to have a couple of my videos to recommend, so please check them out if you want to see some more of my content. I appreciate it. Have a great day. God bless.